in this video I'm going to be making a vehicle for a six inch action figure completely from foam and a couple of other things. I do use some wood bits in this but it's optional not necessary. I just use it to add some detail. So it's completely scratch built and you can see here I'm cutting the pieces on the hot wire foam cutter and just kind of figuring things out. Here I'm marking two parts so I, I know they'll, they'll go together in case I put one down, which with some parts I have to do that, otherwise, uh, you know, I get them turned around, they might not glue together quite as well. Um, but you can see, I'm just kind of winging it and uh, checking out the different, you know, possibilities of what I could do just with the pieces of scrap foam I have laying around. And the only thing I really knew is I wanted to make a hover cycle hovering thingy. Um, little fit a six inch action figure so I didn't have a sketch or anything now I did build one similar to this uh, on a live stream but this one turned out a little bit different and it gave me the idea for making the video because uh, it seemed like a lot of people liked it so as you can see I'm just free handing a lot of these angles and stuff I left uh, like you can see right here where I'm trying to size up and just eyeball what the piece is. So I left a lot of those little bits in there. I'm just gonna kind of let this play and uh, maybe you can, you know, just get a feel for uh, what I'm thinking by watching what my hands are doing when I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what should go where. And I, I do make some mistakes and I left some of those in there. Uh, but ultimately this was about six hours of footage. I edited down to about 16 minutes. So obviously not everything is in here. Uh, I'll chime in every now and then if I have something to say, but for the most part, I think I'm just going to let it run starting now. Here I'm trying to guesstimate what the angle should be. Basically, I guesstimate what every angle should be. Um, you can set the wire on the hot wire foam table to actually cut at an angle consistently, but I usually, when I'm making a one-off piece like this, I just kind of freehand it as much as possible. Sometimes when you have to make a couple of pieces that are identical, like these two fins I'm making right now that go on the side, or uh, I don't know what you'd call them, sideboards or something like that, this is really cool. You can make the shape once and then just thin out the material so you can cut two identical pieces. All the gluing I'm doing here, I'm going to be using a combination of Aileen's Tacky Glue, uh, which lasts longer, and then some hot glue, which will help hold things together while the Aileen's Tacky Glue is drying. And throughout the process of making this, I'm constantly testing it to see if it fits the figure I'm using as my uh, example. Zoom. Yeah, so this is what we have so far and after gluing together all the major components of it I'll just go back over to the hot wire cutter and start looking around and seeing what I think you know it might need to uh, flesh it out a little bit more to give it a more complete look this thing is basically like a Frankenstein so you could just keep adding parts on it until you feel satisfied with it. But you could really go crazy and add lots of little, little bits on here. It doesn't even have to just be plastic. I mean, um, styrofoam and wood bits, like I'm going to be using this. You could have plastic bits. You could have bits from other toys or model kits or something like that. 3D printed items. You can make it as intricate or as plain as you would like to. I 
I don't usually use hot glue on really thin pieces like this because it can sometimes melt the foam or if you don't get it on there really quick it'll form like a, a lump where the, the glue is already kind of solid but I'm moving pretty quick here and I just wanted to hold that piece in place and I'm pretty sure uh, that worked out pretty well. When making all these pieces and putting this together, they could be just squares. But as you'll you'll look at the design here, a lot of these items have little bevels on them. I just think that looks more interesting visually than just a flat square or a rectangle. But you know, you can you can do anything you wanted here. If you wanted to, you could take a little bit of sandpaper and round the edges off so you'd have rounded shapes. Or you can cut a bevel like this and then hit it with sandpaper to round it. Um, you could do quite a bit with foam. The only problem with foam really is it is soft. So over time, putting a figure on and off of it, it will get dinged up, you know, and it's not going to be as hard or as crisp looking as something made out of wood or plastic. Sometimes when I'm making little trim bits like this, I'm not even exactly sure where I'm going to put all of them, but I'll just make lots of strips and stuff so when I go sit down to uh, assemble things and glue things together again. I have some optional parts. Smaller parts like this really don't need the hot glue at all. And as you can see, Throughout the video, I'm sure you've noticed I keep wiping away the excess glue with a piece of scrap foam. Not necessary, but I don't like the little uh, lumps of glue all over the place, although I don't eliminate them all. Right here, instead of actually measuring this like probably most people would, I just kind of stick it on there and figure out, you know, where I would like to cut it to, uh, scoring it with the knife, and then, you know, just once again improvising as I go, which is really fun. It's a really fun part of uh, doing this kind of stuff is all the, you just, you know, do whatever sometimes, and it turns out pretty cool. If you ever have any space or surface that looks a little bit too boring to you, you can always do something like this. Just add a piece of trim on it, put a bumper there, stick a square panel there, um, anything. These two little bumpers I put on the front I was actually thinking about uh, my father's old Sh Chevy Citation when I was a kid. It doesn't look exactly like that, but I'm sure some of you remember those old metal banana bumper things they used to have on cars in the 70s and 80s. Now we're starting to work on the control panel area. I like putting little extra raised panels like this in here and there so I can paint them a different color than 
what's underneath to just kind of give the whole thing some contrast. Now I want to show here that you can make buttons and things out of foam. This is just a little strip of pink foam that I'm cutting with a knife or scoring with a knife. And it would work for making buttons. Me personally, I already have a laser cutter, so I tend to use that now for making most of my buttons because it, I can do more complicated shapes easier and it's very difficult to get a round shape out of foam this small. Uh, very easy to do with a laser cutter, obviously. But as you can see, if you wanted to make something like this and you didn't have a laser cutter available, which most people don't, you totally fine with using square buttons like this. Or if you have some Sculpey and you can buy some really small punches, they're very, very inexpensive. Um, they're just little round punches of different sizes. And you can make little clay round buttons, which is what I used to do before I got the laser cutter. So we're just going to go through here and put on some of these little laser cut parts. You can see this little directional pad. I don't think I could cut that out of foam. I mean, maybe, maybe it would be very difficult to get it to look anywhere near that clean though. I have learned patience and how to use the tweezers because I used to want to do everything with my fingers, but that does not work at all. I mean, it's just a giant mess. The tweezers are much, much better for this. And once again, you know, there's no plan here. It's just kind of willy-nilly, just line them out until they look kind of satisfactory. And uh, they usually seem to turn out pretty good. So it's kind of like playing with Legos. On the bottom here, I went with like this maglev situation. Um, I did, the other one I did had bottle caps on the bottom, but this one has these square pads. Uh, I wanted to make it all from foam, so it, I think it turned out pretty good. Just using some craft paint here. This is a light avocado craft paint. I can't remember the brand of that one. I think it's, yep, it's uh, Americana. And that's Craft Smart Deep Gray right there. Also using this detail brush to get the side of all these panels. Having a set of detail brushes or even just one detail brush like this with a wider grip has been really, really helpful for me. I went with a pretty simple paint job here. The green and gray got some silver coming in here and there and then the little pops of color on the control panel, but you could use any colors you wanted. I did eventually put a little bit of copper metallic paint around the perimeter of these black squares on the bottom to make it look like the paint was rubbing off, the black paint was rubbing off, but I forgot to film that part. So all right, here we are. This build is done. It's, as you can see, it's pretty plain still, right? I mean, got some basic colors on here. It looks good. You could put a figure in it, and if you had like an army of these things, it would look pretty freaking sweet. You know for sure and you could knock out a bunch of these and have a whole hold on let me get this dude seated in here this thing everything's working against me now i got things spinning um you can have an army of these it would look really really cool and it would cost you next to nothing to make them uh, provided you had a hot wire cutter although you could do quite a bit without one as well but here here he is here he is chilling so if you wanted to get a little fancier, you could add some decals to it, or if you had like a stencil or something, you could put like, you know, little uh, caution symbols or all kinds of different things on here. 
and you know what's from stopping you from making a two-seater or a four-seater or something bigger so the whole idea behind this basically was just to show that you could make uh, some pretty simple vehicles doesn't have to be super complex and remember using simpler shapes like this it still looks pretty good and it's much easier than doing everything with curves you know like a modern automobile or something would be extremely complex to get it to look even um, but the boxy stuff is not that difficult which is why lots of old comic books you know drew things in that style yeah I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and uh, hopefully I'll make another one soon take care